Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with an athlete who is very special to me. She just turned pro at her first national show at 50 years old after eight Mm -hmm. years in this sport. She works as a professional certified registered nurse in a high volume transplant hospital in Florida. And she works full time while also balancing being a wife and a mother and an ISSA certified trainer in nutrition and bodybuilding who really represents women in this sport. And she's motivated to help other women over 40 with a full plate like herself to take care of themselves. I'm really, really excited to welcome Michelle Abramson. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you very much. (laughs) Of course. It's my pleasure. Like I said, I'm just so thrilled to have you on the show for many reasons. And we'll get into that. But first of all, what's one thing you do or think about, or maybe a ritual you have right before your heel hits the stage? Um, I think I just asked myself to just enjoy it. You know, I, I, I love just going out and uh, having fun and it's kind of like the work is done. I'm just going to go and have fun and whatever happens happens. Yes. So, so, so true. Yeah. And I practice my posing, I think every day, like five times a day. So <laughs> if awesome. I don't know by now, <laughs> uh, you know, it is do you practice it is. backstage too. Yes. Uh, as a matter. Yeah, I do. I practice backstage. I find mirrors and, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, when you practice your posing during prep, you said sometimes that's up to five times a day. Are those yeah. short spurts or are they long spurts? No, I basically have like, because I work full time. So I pick, um, only my days off and I do all the recordings on my days off. And then if I get out early or if I have some extra time, I'll do it at home in front of a big mirror. But for the most part, um, I was kind of exaggerating. So it's just, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's probably, it's probably more like three or four times a week, you know, That's but awesome. I do, I do take about a good 20 minutes, 30 minutes of practice. And I just videotape myself and you know, try, try different angles or, you know, there's only like two places where I do the practicing so I can see, um, good lighting or bad lighting and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it's good to constantly practice our posing as, as much as we can and do it in different, like you said, different lighting, different circumstances, um, even different times of the day. Yeah. Cause it's a feel I would yeah. have to say like a lot of times the way you pose is a feel like how you turn your waist and how I, you know, how you push your, your glutes out, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I think that's important. Yeah, I don't know. absolutely. No, I agree. Yeah. And you gotta be, you gotta be focused and kind of get in that head space of how you're going to feel before you step on stage. Yeah. I mean, you've done so much work and it's like, you just want to show it off. You know, you're just kind of like, okay, I'm here. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for my brownie. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Bam Body. Me and you both. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You've been a fan of Bam Body for years, even longer than me, I think. Yeah. I was one of uh, her first ambassadors, actually. And um, when she first like started, well, I wouldn't say when she first started, but I was so excited about it because um, they taste amazing and they're pretty much my go to after my show. Um, I just, I'm so strict with my meal plan. So I try to, you know, maximize what I can eat. But for the most part, they, um, they don't last very long (laughs) when I get them. So I always, I always make sure that I get them. And then I, you know, of course I share. Yeah. 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 I don't share. You don't share. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Uh, Well, I don't know. Is sharing sharing the same as buying one, one whole box for you and one whole box for your son? (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) I don't think it's the same. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, well, 
one of the reasons I'm so happy to have you on is because me and you work together. So you guys yeah. listening, Michelle was a client of mine and I've approved bringing this up with her before, you know, just, just spilling it. But um, I think what I want to point out here is your drive and determination. So when we were working together, you had written in your goal pages of the program journal that your goal right. was to get on the national stage and become a pro at 50. And now you've right. done it. So yeah. how does that feel? It feels amazing. Um, there was many, many times that I questioned myself, like, what, what am I doing? I'm 50 years old or I'm getting close to 50. And um, part of me was just kind of like, you know what? It's one of those bucket list things that will that most people just would never even attempt. Um, and then the other big drive for me is that I work in a hospital and um, I see a lot of women my age uh, in their forties and fifties that really just lose their health. And if I could be that poster child mm -hmm. for some of those people to kind of get them back on track, then that was a big motivating factor for me as well. I love that. I actually, yeah. one of the things that I appreciate about you is how you are so focused on being an inspiration to yeah. others. Um, and I was just talking to my dad, telling him about how I was going to be interviewing you and how awesome yeah. you are. And he was saying how he notices that many women of his age and men of his age, um, he's in, he's in his sixties, early, early sixties, right. but he, he was saying, you know, people tend to just not seem to care. And, and he thinks it's likely because, you know, they don't have anyone necessarily maybe to impress or they have a lot of other things um, in their life that are established. And I, I tend to agree with him. And also I remember you had written in your form and you had made some posts that sometimes it does come down to just not believing in yourself, not believing it's possible. So right. what made you believe that it was? Well, um, it's a good question because I had a lot of people telling me that I wasn't fit for bikini. I had, really? um, yeah, I had coaches tell me that I would do better in a different, um, league. That's why I went to the uh, WBFF. Um, and then I got my pro card in the WBFF and I said to myself, you know what? Um, I really love NPC IFBB. It was my first love. And, um, I think I can prove them wrong. I mean, I saw Erin Stern change her body from, figure yes. to bikini. And, um, I'm like, I feel like I can do it. You know, um, I love competing. I love being on the stage. It drives me, it keeps me motivated. It keeps me focused on being healthy. Um, and I think a lot of people don't have that, but, you know, they, you call it your why, why you do things. Mm -hmm. So that was my why to push me when I was exhausted to push me and I know it's a little extreme and you don't have to be that extreme to be healthy, but it definitely taught me a lot about my body. It taught me a lot about health and fitness. It taught me a lot about looking at a girl in a magazine and saying, I know how she got there. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so many times when we're in our twenties and thirties, we look at these magazines and we're like, oh, I want to be like that. And you read like the five second thing that they have on there, or you read their little workout and you're like, oh, that's it. That's all I have to do. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more than that. And when I actually tried, I actually did some coaching on some of the nurses and doctors that I work with and the ones that look at it as a long-term project did the best. Yes. The people that, the people that look at it is like, oh, I just want to get fit in like, I don't know, three months, you know, it, it, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that way. And, um, and that's the hardest thing is that life is so stressful life, uh, especially as we get older with our kids and our career, um, it does go on the back burner, but then you end up getting heart problems, blood pressure problems, sugar problems, thyroid problems, uh, arthritis, um, all, all kinds of things that are just not necessary. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you get overweight and then it just compounds on there. So no, that's true. And it's interesting because you have the nurse background as well and experience. So you really get probably an inside look into what's really happening. That's maybe causing or creating or um, worsening these problems yeah. that naturally we tend to face as we get older. Yeah. I mean, I work in the operating room and I see a lot of surgeries. 
um, a lot of surgeries and, and a lot of the comorbidities of people just because of weight, <laughs> just mm-hmm. because of weight. And it's, 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 un, it's unfortunate that the education is not there. So, but it's a long process and I can't reiterate that enough. I mean, it's just something that, you know, if I could do a lecture on and say, Hey, this is not, this is a lifestyle change for sure. You know, and it affects everything. It affects your family. It affects your friends. It affects your loved ones. It affects everything that you do from the day, from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. So it's a big, big, um, adjustment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I know a lot of culture doesn't, a lot of cultures don't, um, they don't allow for it. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Well, also like not only does changing your life to be fit and healthy, or maybe just more focused on health affect your life every day in every way, because it's an adjustment, but also living with those comorbidities or weight issues affects your life in every way. And I think there's a massive issue we're facing where um, society's being too careful not to hurt people's feelings. And it's proven that having excess weight is unhealthy and detrimental and, and deadly. There's a reason why it's morbidly obese. Right. Um, so, and from a psychological perspective, I can recognize and have seen through various research reports that weight plays a big role, a big role in our mental health. And especially, you know, depending on how we've gained the weight or, or the weight is on our bodies or how long, but people just by changing their lifestyle in a, in a simple way, such as walking outside would reap so many amazing rewards and benefits. And it really is about that uh, lifestyle. Like you said, the most successful people you've worked with view it as that long-term journey. Right. Right. And the people that are most balanced have adjusted to a regular exercise program, have adjusted to having whole foods, have adjusted to picking healthier, healthier choices, you know, not, not binging and drinking on the weekends and stuff. But, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know it's hard. Uh, it's definitely not an easy thing to do. It's easier to say, just go keto, (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) but I can't, I can't live on that. I can't do that. So like I said, I mean, it's just one of those things that I hope that with my influence that maybe some, some people will kind of cross over and learn. I think, unfortunately, some people may feel a little intimidated, um, but I'm, I'm really easily approachable. So <laughs> I hope that, you know, I hope that this might help. I don't know. I think it will. Yeah. I think you really yeah. are a representation and it's already helped. And, um, I also was excited to bring you on because of your experiences in fitness and in nutrition and bodybuilding, as well as of course, nursing and, and these things all go hand in hand. Um, so what inspired you to add training and nutrition coaching to your repertoire and busy life Uh, as it was? (laughs) Well, I had, you know, I kind of kept it a secret when I first competed, (laughs) (laughs) I didn't really want to tell anybody. Um, and I, um, when I, when I got out, basically everybody, everybody was asking me for help, everybody. And I'm like, I no, 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 no. And then finally I said, you know what? I've always wanted to become certified. I've always, it's my, I actually became certified because I enjoyed learning about it and learning about, I mean, I know a lot about health and fitness, but I mean, I started teaching aerobics when I was 16 years old, you know, so I've always loved the industry. And at the time when I was going to school, there was no master's in nutrition and science. There was none of that. So I just kind of did it on my own. And because, because people were just asking me over for their help, I said, you know what, I'll make a little business out of it. Um, I put a lot of time into it. I put hours into each person's program because I don't cookie cutter anything. You know, I, I ask them detailed questions and I try to really get an idea of their lifestyle. So that way they can fit it in. Um, I even have gone to the extreme of going, going to people's houses and um, they do home workouts and, and helping them if they have back problems or knee problems and say, do this or versus that so they can be successful, you know? So I, I try my best. I mean, uh, it doesn't always work. Um, 
but there was a couple of people that I did that, that actually made some changes and they, they still, to this day, you know, um, write down what they eat and follow a, a healthy program. So I think that's good. Absolutely. Yeah. Any impact, um, whether we perceive it as smaller or massive is still an impact. And obviously you've been able to do that with your knowledge and, and then adding on to that knowledge with more expertise and care and attention to detail. Um, right. Of course, you're adding more to your plate and you talked about how this is something you want to motivate people who have a lot on their plate. So what does a normal day look like for you and how do you <laughs> manage it all? You're going to be exhausted. Um, okay. So <laughs> I get up, at, I get up at 4 a.m. Um, the, oh, I have, we have two little doodles. So um, I have, I get up at 4 a.m. And uh, I, I take my pre workout first thing in the morning. <laughs> wow. Really? Then, yeah, yeah, I do. I do. And then I, I take care of the doodles. Um, they, um, they eat, they walk. Um, and then I go to the gym for an hour. Then I go to work. I do a 10 hour day um, in the OR. Um, and then four days a week. Um, and then if I'm training for a show, I do cardio after work, um, and also take care of the doodles and take them to the dog park or do something. And I'm in bed probably by eight thirty nine 9 o'clock at night. Um, I'm either, and then in between all that, I'm usually prepping, cooking, cooking for my son. Um, you know, just, I, take the weekends and I kind of make all my food. So it's not something that I have to really worry about during the week. So that way it's just kind of like putting everything together. Or I have everything pretty much prepackaged based on whatever my macros are going to be for that week. So that I take out of the equation. So, um, but my days off are pretty much preparing for my work week, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it yeah. makes perfect sense. I think we need um, those hours or that time and space to be able to pre prepare for a week. And then, of course, there's wrenches that get thrown in there despite preparation. Oh, um, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Like what? <laughs> I was, I was going to ask what? you if you've had that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, like, the, you know, like if the doggies get sick or if um, my son doesn't feel well or if um, my husband decides he's going to go out of town and then I'm by myself or um, yeah, you know, work exhausts me because I had a hard day. I mean, there's always something, but then I just pretty much, I, I just talk to myself and I just say, you, you're going to get through this. You know, you're just going to, you're just going to get through it. You're going to be tired, but you're going to do it. And, and tomorrow's a new day. You know um, I just, that's kind of how I get through it before though. I know, you know, we had talked about, um, when I, when I contacted you mm -hmm. and, um, I would have to say that before I was able to not, I was not really aware of, I think my feelings regarding stress and would reach for maybe a different alternative like food, you know, to help yeah. me or calm me. And I still have some of those things that like my iced coffee is one of my soothers, <laughs> which I know we talked about. I remember. <laughs> I don't know if I still, it's still in my diet, but, um, my point, my point is, is that it, it's, it, it's really kind of like just being aware of it and being aware of the stress and not letting it take over. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, awareness is a really key thing. And before, you know, you would turn to food and some people would refer to this as emotional eating or, right. um, you know, eating to fill a void or stress eating or whatever it might be. And, I think people assume that anyone who um, maybe follows macros or who uh, gets to choose what's on their meal plan or, or whatever wouldn't struggle with their relationship with food. But this is really not true. It, I mean, yes, there's a lot of things that come from restriction and restriction doesn't have to mean just food groups. It can mean food period, like when you're prepping, you know, or when you're yeah. Oh, yeah. and and those yeah. things change, but also then there's the emotion and the stress. So maybe you could share uh, and you could hype me up, but no, I'm just kidding, <laughs> but you could talk Do about I? your time in the program, how it was to work with me, maybe what inspired you to, and then how doing that in your well, improvement actually, season helped. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and always after I've done a show, you know, you go through this like mini depression a little bit, you know, it's kind of like, okay, now what? And um, everybody's like, okay, you're going to eat normal now. 
Are you going to um, have this? Are you going to have to dinner now? Are you going to do this now? And you're just like, oh, okay, okay. And then you realize that you're not staying true to your goals because you're allowing all these other things to come in the way of your, you know, of what your future goals may be or what you want to do for yourself. And all those things compound onto your emotions. And then um, life hits you with different stresses. And you're like, oh, well, I already blew it. So um, now it's like, I might as well, let's, let's go and have ice cream or let's, let's, what, what can I have in the kitchen or I'm by myself. And then it just gets, it kind of comes into like a domino effect. So I've, I had, when I first started this whole competing thing, I worked with a coach that was so restrictive. The food was a meal plan to the point where she caught me in whole foods. This is, this is no joke. She caught me in whole foods and called me up and she said, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I literally had one of those, they're called Kalicious. It was a green smoothie, which is made mostly with vegetables. And the only, I think, fruit was maybe a banana and a green apple in it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I was drinking the Kalicious, which was not on my plan. <laughs> And she said, my brother saw you in Whole Foods. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I, I was I was drinking a Kalicious. And she's like, what were you doing? Oh, my God. <laughs> That's how strict it was. And I was just like, Yikes. I lost it. I lost it afterwards. So I went through a couple of times like this. And when I contacted you, I was, you know, in one of those kinds of states where I was just like, oh, man, I'm, I'm losing it again. And I saw your, I've been following you and I saw some of the things you posted and I'm like, that makes sense. That makes sense. Wow. That makes sense. So I said, let me just, let me just find out, you know, and I was really impressed with you because not only were you on point, but you were so attentive and so, um, easily accessible. And I felt like I really had someone that cared about helping me make this process easier. And when we talked about some things that when I realized how deep rooted a lot of these things are, it made me take a look at myself and say, okay, these are the things that I'm going to work on because this is what it's all about. It's not about the food. It's about the feeling that I'm trying to not feel. And it's about learning how to cope with that feeling differently. And that should resolve my wanting to self-sabotage everything that I've worked for. Um, and then when I learned how to do macros, for me, that was a lifesaver because everybody gets cravings. Everybody wants to have chocolate. Everybody wants to, you know, do something that's not quote diet food and macros gives you that freedom. And it also allows you to, uh, it allows you to maintain your goals. So I really enjoyed that. And that first coach never knew anything about macros. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't so sound like it. I, no. So when mm -hmm. I found someone that did, it was like, I went through that whole IFFY, you know, the whole macro, like, Oh, I could fit this crazy donut into my, into my um, diet, mm -hmm. but then I can't have anything else the rest of the day. So I really learned how to find things. And I really learned, I learned how to cook. Um, and I love my food. So I have a lot of things to look forward to now. So um, Yeah. I'm not saying I'm completely healed with all of the emotional stuff, but uh, I've definitely come a long way. So I want to thank Love you that. for that. Oh, of course. Yeah. No, it's, you're yeah. welcome. It's my pleasure. And when you reached out, I was really impressed by your attention to detail as well. You were willing to do the work. And I think that is the key in the healing process. And we right. may never, you know, get to a point where everything's perfect, but the awareness, the habits, the change in behavior, the way that we view what we're doing makes a huge difference. And like you said, now you, you use something like affirmations to help you through it, or you're transitioning more to, um, or you transition more to macro-based eating, which has given you the ability to work in those foods that you crave. And you've learned more ways to address the emotional voids or needs that previously was shortcutted through food. Yeah, I think this industry definitely, um, um, it, it's, it's kind of open for people that have these kinds of issues. Um, you know, um, I, I don't know how to explain it. I think it, it draws people, it draws certain, mm -hmm. a certain type of person. 
Um, and you do have to be a little OCD <laughs> to do yes. this kind of stuff. Um, if you want to be successful, I think, I think you have to be a little OCD to, to a certain degree, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. Not a negative thing. I think a lot of type A personalities are very successful. So I'd like to just put that in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, um, in any industry where someone's successful, usually you'll find, uh, the trait of conscientiousness, which is the desire or the ability and the commitment to do things really well, um, yeah. and to execute. Um, every day to succeed, to strive, etc. And you have that. I, I see a lot of athletes, yeah, who have that. And type A is not a bad thing. It can become a bad thing when we see it. it's usually with a bit of neuroticism and people always hear that and take it the wrong way. But it, technically right. in this sport, like we are focused on flaws as well as strengths. Like we focus on what needs to be better. People get off the stage and are instantly like, what needs to be better, which is fine. That's good. Yeah, but I, yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. uh, it's the, the combination of that as well as that all or nothing um, is a sign of successful thinking, but also potentially detrimental if not addressed or maybe channeled in the right way. Right. Well, it definitely, because I mean, like I had my insecurities and I think the reason why it took me so long to get this pro card um, for me also was because I doubted myself for so many years and it wasn't mm -hmm. until my coach now, Paul Ravella, who basically didn't take no for an answer. And he's mm -hmm. like, no, nope, you're going on a national stage. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Hell okay, yeah. Let's do this. So know, glad so that he did. Was, yeah. So he pushed, he, he was the reason and he had no doubt. And it was like, wow, wow. You know, sometimes that's all you need is just to have someone to believe in you. So and, true. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it goes a long way. It does. Someone who believes in you and gets you and wants to see you succeed and help you to do that. Um, right. And of course, like it's not always a clear path. And you had started competing years ago. Um, 2013 was your first NPC show. And you've, right. well, you always did incredibly well, too. Um, so when you finally, you know, got that belief from your coach, and it sounds like things were aligned, right? Like you were following a macro approach is more flexible. You've yeah. been in the game for yeah. a bit, started addressing yeah. the mental side of things. So how did that shift maybe impact your actual prep? Like how did having someone believe in you and having addressed these things help you to then focus on the prep and get where you ended up being, which is winning your pro card at the first one? Um, I think for any, if anything, it just kept me um, believing in myself. And I think that's one of the things you have to, anytime you win anything, I think you have to truly believe that you are a winner. I think you have to believe that you can do it. Um, no matter what anybody says. And some may say, okay, you're, you know, your, your thinking is warped, but I don't know. I just feel like, I think you have to go in there thinking, thinking that way. Um, because if you have any doubt, it's going to show on stage. Yes. Well, if you don't oh. believe you're a winner, basically you believe you're a loser and that sounds terrible. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, confidence and self awareness and, and just, you know, unfortunately we have to be our own coaches a lot. Mm -hmm. I think that's part of growing up is, is becoming your own coach, becoming your own cheerleader, you know, um, because there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of people. That's my doodle. There's going to be a lot of people. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to, they're going to stop you. There's, I, I can't begin to tell you how many times I had people say to me, okay, are you done? Is this enough? Um, aren't we going to do this normal thing now? Uh, you know, just a lot of things that, and, and I'll never forget one girl said to me, she said, one thing you're going to have to remember, you have to stay strong. You have to stay strong. And I, and I always thought about that because I didn't realize it, what she meant <laughs> Yeah. until I was like, okay, now I, now I get it. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Yeah. And when you, when you work this hard for this many years, it's, it's a huge accomplishment. <laughs> huge. So yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, it's huge. I mean, you know, just like every, everybody's got their stepping stones, but it's like, 
I, I really appreciate being where I'm at. So, yeah. Yeah. Especially at, my, especially at my age, especially at my age. It's like, that's, it's no joke. <laughs> yeah. What is it? I mean, maybe what, how does the it's feeling? You're, exa- you're exhausted. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're exhausted. You're, I don't have the energy I had when I was in my twenties. I definitely don't. Um, I have to really pick and choose um, what I want to do with my time off. Um, I have to be very, very um, aware of how much sleep I get. Um, unfortunately, that's the only bad thing. Um, and I also have to realize that I can't develop the muscle like I could in my 20s. So it's, it's definitely an area that's always a little bit more frustrating. But um, I just work hard, you know. I figure yeah. one good thing is I'm competing against women my own age and they are no joke. I was very impressed with the girls that were my age. I was like, wow, you guys, you know, there's not very many of us, but you look good. Yeah, <laughs> They look good. So, yeah. I think the last, many of the last episodes I've recorded um, have been with masters competitors. They haven't been released yet, but it's, yeah really cool because your body's changed your uh life demands have changed your yeah you maybe are more established I, I believe someone was saying maybe it was Helen she was talking about how you're more established with your um career and and finances are more stable things of that nature but it doesn't right. change you know at least from hearing from you it's like that doesn't change the fact that your body's also in a different space and your energy and there's other things that um maybe require more attention. Right. Right. Definitely. Now Definitely. you had these doubters and people who tried to pull you back into the crap basket, so to speak. And you established a new normal for yourself, which was this lifestyle. And right. you had competed multiple years, many times you had your year off in 2015. And I want to just talk to you about your entire competing history and journey but I want to start by talking about 2014 when you competed in figure and you did well in figure so yeah, yeah. why did you do that and and then you know you would- again again because people were telling me that I was not I did mm. not have the body for uh, a bikini and that I would do better in figure and people were constantly saying to me oh are you figure or are you bikini so I said, well, maybe I should do figure because I was feeling insecure. So I, I did it. And then I realized. Oh, okay. And then I, I, I realized that um, I didn't like figure. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. I hated it. I hated the posing. I hated. I just I didn't like it. Suits are beautiful, but I, I it wasn't yeah. for me. You know, I like to perform on stage. I like to, you know, have fun with it. And I really feel like the posing so yeah that was um why I, I I did it and then when I went back into the bikini world um again it was just basically to prove that I could do it well I feel like that probably paid off for you because during that time that was when bikini was really evolving to be more muscular like 2015 and into um 2017 then uh-huh. we started seeing more and more muscle coming on to competitors. So when you took 2015 off, were you training knowing you would be going back to bikini or was that you're off for other reasons? I think I was off for other reasons. I think there were some personal reasons. I can't really, I can't remember why. Yeah. I, I honestly don't remember. Well, that's okay. I just figured yeah. it out. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't, I don't. <laughs> I know. I think I was planning. Oh, I, I think I was planning on doing a show. I don't know. I know I got married in 2014. Um, I got remarried in 2014. Um, and I don't, I, I don't know if I was planning on doing a show in 2015 and something happened. I don't, I don't remember. Well, that's okay. I mean, yeah. it was part of your journey, whatever it was. And, um, after that, you had come back um, 2016. And then when did you compete in the WBFF? And, and was that also because people told you you couldn't? Yes. So I had a coach that um, basically kept telling me that I was too muscular for bikini. Um, and she was going through her own stuff. 
um, which I found out later, but she basically was, was, was just telling me that I had body dysmorphia and that I was um, not fit for bikini, the NPC, um, and that I should think about doing the WBFF because that's, you know, better for me. And um, I really started to really self doubt myself. I was just like, wow, because I couldn't, pl- I kept on placing second, second, I couldn't win a first. And I thought, okay, maybe she's right. So I took it upon myself. And then she ended up getting um, pregnant and she ended up having problems with her. Um, I don't know, I guess her boyfriend or whatever. And so I realized, and then I got very sick. Actually, I ended up in the hospital. I got sick mm. and um, I, I recovered from that. And then after I recovered, because I had asked her after I recovered, to get, I wanted to get back on track. and. Uh, She's like, well, what are your macros? And I'm like, I've been in the hospital for a week. What do you mean one of my macros? Oh my and I God. knew it. I knew, and I knew at that point, I'm like, okay, she's, she has her own stuff going on. So I found somebody here locally and um, he helped me get through the, the WBFF. And that was when um, I changed a lot of things. Like I changed my training. I changed my, my diet. And um you know, that was a, that was a pretty big feat. You know, that was, that was, uh, it just was, it was, um, I felt like this was a completely new thing for me. And when I did it, um, I liked it, but it wasn't, it just didn't have the same feel as the NPC IFBB. It just didn't, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of what, what drew drew me to that. Amazing. So really a lot of times you did deal with people doubting your abilities and yet you were performing well, maybe it wasn't first place, but you were performing well. Were you getting judges feedback at that time too? Um, not too much. Um, you know, they, I was always improve your butt, improve your butt. (laughs) (laughs) It's always, you know, it's kind of like, okay, okay. Um, but not, not too much. No. Um, I tried, but it was, you know, at my, I don't know. I just kind of, I, like I said, it was just one of those things where it was just, I had to just do it for me. Yeah. I did it for me. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. So. And you were pursuing this lifestyle. You were enjoying it. You were testing out different things and then you knew, okay, NPC is my league and bikini is my division, my division. Um, and you really started just running with it. Were there shows that you really love doing that you're always going to remember? Are there shows you want to go back and do now that you're a pro? Oh, you know, honestly, no, I just want to find where the masters are, (laughs) (laughs) where where, where the masters are. And and, then I'll I'll, like, I'm doing, um, I'm doing a show in uh, Baltimore for the first time because they have a master's division in my age group. And then there's one in um, Fort Lauderdale with my, with my age group. I'm like, you know, cause I mean, I mean, I'm not going to be doing this forever. It's just something that I want to do right now. Cause I enjoy it. Yeah. So, Um, yeah. That's two weeks from now. You were telling me before we hit record. So Uh how are you feeling pro debut? I know. I know. I feel pretty good. I, um, Cause I got myself down to uh, 96 pounds, which is insane. That is insane. I, <laughs> that is yeah, actually, like, how tall are you? I'm five feet. I'm five feet. Okay. But uh, I look, I look bigger on in the picture, but I, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm five feet and uh, got down to 96 pounds. And um, he basically had me calories for like two weeks with, uh, to me, it was so many carbs and I only gained like a pound. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So it was a nice, it's almost like a, once you hit that body weight that you want to be at or your fat percentage, it's, it's easier to maintain than to lose weight and get to that point. So it's been fine. Good. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. He actually wanted, he wanted me to do a show on the second October 2nd, but I couldn't get the time off. Cause he was like, you're right there. Your body's right there. Let's just go for it. And I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> How did he adjust once you were like, I can't do it. Um, same thing. He basically, like I said, gave me the maintenance calories for two weeks. And then he, I did like a low carb week and then I had today's my second refeed day. So we'll see what he, he, I check in tomorrow. So we'll see what he says. Awesome. 
Oh, how yeah. exciting. I'm, I'm so excited for you. And um, obviously you're competing and representing the master's division. And when you had won your pro card, you had posted that you wanted other women at 50 who feel that their life is over to experience that feeling. But when I read that, I thought, well, what was the feeling that she had? So how did it actually feel when you won your pro card? Oh, it felt amazing. I got to say, mm -hmm. I was uh, very excited because, um, you know, with the, um, with the IFBB, um, I was able to actually get pictures and, and I had like an actual card that said I was, a you know, IFBB pro. Um, and it was just, I was just on cloud nine. I was just so happy. I was just like, I did it. I did it. I finally, finally did it. So yes. it felt amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And Very you really... Exciting. You really uh, changed your physique over the years. So you said that the judges kept telling you glutes and like, oh my God, you changed yeah. them. Like you completely yeah. transformed your body. So yeah. what do you think maybe attributed to that? Or how did your training style have to evolve for you to accomplish that? Well, I had to be a little bit more proactive with my training and, and saying, I want to focus on my shoulders. I want to focus on my glutes. I want to focus on what's going to give me that X frame. And, um, I don't do any biceps or triceps. Um, I really, uh, I do my glutes and my legs three times a week. Um, and then I, you know, alternate twice a week with the back and shoulders and, um, just basically like focusing on, on what I know is going to help give me that look that, that they're looking for, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I did, I kind of became a little bit more proactive with my, uh, with my training. That's great. And, uh, what are some of your favorite ways to train in the gym? Like, do you have any favorite movements for lower body and upper body? Uh, <laughs> you know what? I hate to say it, but I'm boring. Um, it's pretty much, <laughs> there's nothing really, uh, different or exciting about what I do. Um, one thing that I learned and it was from, it's from this one pro Zeke pro who is, he's in, he's incredible. His name is, uh, Tori Washington. He's a vegan, uh, physique pro. And he basically said, bodybuilding is boring. It's about progressive overload and just focusing on, you know, making those improvements. And I kind of took that to heart. I mean, sometimes I throw some other things in there, but for the most part, uh, it's all your basic um, hip thrusts and kickbacks and hamstring curls and RDLs and <laughs> yeah. it's boring. It's boring. Sh uh, overhead shoulder press lateral raises, nothing. I yep. can't say that it's anything really, fa nothing fancy. For nothing sure. Fancy. Yeah. You get in, get out, do what you got to do. And, and that's it. And listen to your body and that's it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. My, uh, yeah. my boyfriend, Robbie always says bodybuilding is so boring. I'm like, you're a power lifter. You literally do what we do, but with only three movements, like that seems so right. much worse <laughs> I'm like, that seems more boring, but, um, no, it's true. Like it's the basics. And, um, once you kind of find what works for you, like you are saying, listen to your body, you kind of get in a really good groove. And I know you're, I don't know if your coach does your programming, but you start to know like what programming is well, actually. The, well, the funny, the funny thing is he does do my programming, but I tweak it. <laughs> I tweak it. Your I own coach. Be your own coach. Yeah. Because, because the thing is, is that like, I, my, I, my biceps and triceps are huge and, and I just, I can't, I don't want to do them anymore. Yeah. So the bikini doesn't want biceps and triceps, you know? <laughs> yeah. I understand that. And if you get yeah. your biceps and triceps yeah. like down, it'll probably make your shoulders look even bigger. Exactly. 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 So yeah, that's what I love about bodybuilding. It's like, you're basically, you're, you're, you're making, you're molding yourself, you know, it's pretty cool. I like yeah, it. It is. Yeah. It's, such a, it's such a cool sport. And, um, I think it can add so much to our life. Although, you know, when it stops being fun, we don't want to do it anymore. Yes. Stop. So it doesn't take away from our life, but how has it added to your life given that you are doing so many things? Um, it gives me, I think for me, I think it also helps me feel youthful. Mm. Um, you know, when we're 20 something, I think you take that for granted, but when you're forties and fifties, it's kind of like, and you can lift more weight than most people. It feels pretty damn good. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. 
I love that yeah. so much. And how has it made an impact on your family? Um, some positive, some negative. I mean, I think that they've had to adjust to the time that I put into it. Um, I think one good thing is that my, I feel like my son definitely has adapted a healthier lifestyle because of it. Um, you know, he, I, I put like a little home gym in, in the house and he's used that several times and now he goes to the gym. So I feel good about it. And then my husband used to bodybuild as well. So he understands it. But, um, you know, the positives are definitely that it's just been part of my life and it's always been a part of their lives. Um, and then the negatives would be, you know, like, I think my parents don't necessarily understand why I eat the way I eat, mm -hmm. but, um, again, I think you just have to be, you kind of have to stay true to yourself, you know, yeah. and if it's something that you love then, and it makes you happy. It, that's what it's about. It's about fulfilling your own happiness so that it's your life. You know what I mean? It's your life. Exactly. And you, if you don't do what makes you happy and you only ever seek to please people, there comes you'll a never, point. Yeah. No, you'll never, never be happy. Yeah. You won't be happy. And it's kind of like how you were told you can't do this. And then you would change your goal. And it wasn't until you came back to your original goal, your home base, right? That you realize like, no, this is actually where I belong. Right. I mean, I had made friends in the NPC and I, and I, and it was kind of like, you go back there and you see people and you're like, Oh, Hey, you know, it's like, and when I was yeah. sitting back at, at the stage in nationals, um, I, you know, I had, I hadn't been in a big group for a while, but when I joined team pro physique, it was like all these girls, we were all hanging out together and it was actually nice. It was like basically a bunch of girls with all the same goals. And it was nice. It was really nice to see that there's actually people out there that are like you. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was, it was good. That it was is really awesome. Good. It it does feel so good to be surrounded by people who get it and, and who just know what, what does this process entail and the different challenges that it can bring and the amazing blessings it brings. And we remember like, we're definitely not alone in this. Right. Right. I think in every sport, I think you'll find your group, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Well, I really love that you have found what makes you happy and you're so set on staying true to yourself. You said there may be a time where you don't compete anymore. What do you see? Yeah life looking like after that? Um, I think I will still maintain um, this lifestyle. Um, I think I'm still going to eat healthy. I'm going to cook all the time. I'm going to work out for myself. And I hope that I'll be able to actually reach other people and kind of um, help other people kind of be successful in this. I think that would be, I think that would be something um, to be able to reach some people. I, it's very hard though. It's definitely very hard to do to maintain it or to help other people to help other people yeah it's very hard i find that a lot of people don't really understand um they don't understand the importance of it they don't understand you know there's so many so much misinformation about diet and exercise out there that it's just uh they don't they don't get it <laughs> yeah you know it's uh one of those things that i've come to realize if we try to help people where they are, we may not get them where they want to go. And sometimes we have to educate before we can help someone. Um, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? If someone doesn't know that actually fad diets aren't good or actually um, checking your body 10 times a day is not good, then they may not have the awareness to then want to fix it because it doesn't seem to be a detriment. Right, right. Right. There's a lot, there's, you know, even in the healthcare world, it's amazing how many people, um, that you, you should see the way they talk about diets. It's like the new fad diet goes around like a, like Jeez. a popular, like a popular contest in it's the health a, field, in the health field. Yeah. Yeah. It's, did you hear about this diet? Cause this, this is the, this girl lost all this weight. I mean, and you don't even have to work out. <laughs> oh my God. You're like, well, that and I'm like, sucks. I'm like, Oh, Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they tell you don't don't even work out because that'll ruin the diet. <laughs> oh my god! Like, wow, actually, I wow. have heard of that before because they're usually like yeah. super extremely low calorie diets. So then, yeah, they yeah. don't want and you to. You work probably out. have no, you probably have no energy. 
Yeah. That, why, how could you? I mean, me and you both, I don't, I don't ever see myself going keto unless I absolutely had to, because uh, yeah. what type yeah. of, I don't know, just, I, I find balance to be the solution and, and the better option always. Yeah. So it's always kind of funny when people see me eat bread and they're like, they're like, you eat bread? I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, Had a bagel this morning. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. It's like, this is not torture. It's just, it's just a different level of attention to this lifestyle really. Right. Right. So Michelle, tell yes. us what your best advice is for people who have never competed before, but would like to, and then your best advice for people on their road to pro. Okay. I think my best advice for people that want to compete, um, that never have is have patience. Um, Things really, really don't happen overnight. Um, could, could you become pro overnight? There are some people that have some muscle definition from like, I guess, some sports that they did in high school or whatever, and it's happened. But I think for the most part, bodybuilding is an art. And I think you have to have patience. Yeah. Um, and then what was the second one? <laughs> for those on their road to pro. Uh, it's that same saying, don't give up don't give up. I think if you really, really want it and you have a reason why you're doing it and you're, it's just something that, um, I, I I just don't think you should give up. I mean, I don't think you should do anything to hurt yourself. Um, if you're doing something that's unhealthy or you're doing something that's going to hurt you internally, that's different. But if you're, you know, being true to yourself and you're just, you know, people are saying, no, no, no. I I say, yes. You know, Mm -hmm. you think you got it, go for it. You know what I mean? And have fun, have fun doing it, have fun uh, learning about your body, have fun getting on stage, have fun getting all glammed up, have fun. And, and, and it's just, it's a part of life. It's a process. Amazing. Beautiful yeah. advice. Well, before we wrap this up, can you let everybody know how they can find you, connect with you, maybe even work with you? Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, my, my, it's my name, Michelle J. Um, J is for Janine. So it's Michelle J it's Michelle J Abramson, um, at gmail.com is my email. And that's the same name, Michelle J Abramson for my IG account. And, um, that's pretty much like what I check on a daily basis. So if anybody wants to reach me, they can always DM me or send me an email and, uh, ask me anything, you know, um, I'm up for, um, pretty much anything if they need help with coaching or they want, um, I do also the diet and the exercise, um, but I do it with macros and I do it through the ISIS certification. So I follow their macro style when setting up the calories, but for the most part, it's a one-to-one basis where everybody's individual, you know, and, um, it takes time. That's the other thing. It takes time. It's not something I do in a 12 week. (laughs) I don't do six weeks, 12 week transformations. So yeah. Amazing. I love that. Keeping it real. Yeah. Keeping it real. (laughs) Well, I will put all of that information in the show notes page. So you guys, that's always at celestial.fit slash podcast. Michelle will have her own category. So if you are listening to this right away, her episode will be at the top of the page. If you're listening in the future, just scroll down to the category section. It's alphabetical. So you can just find Michelle Abramson there. And then you'll see all the show notes, episode timestamps, the ways to connect with her and resources. So Michelle, thank you again so much for coming on and being so open with us and sharing your insights and yeah, just being you. I'm really grateful that we got to connect in this way. All right. Yeah, I am too. And I'm, I'm really, um, I, I want to thank you too, because you're, you're amazing. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. You really are. You thank really you are. so much. I appreciate yeah. you and for saying that as well. And also and, for talking. And about. I got to try, and I got to try your band body brownie special. <laughs> oh my gosh. The one that, the one that you made. I got to try that one. <laughs> it's the Sunday. I don't, I think that was like a peanut butter and jelly one or something. Oh, I, that I one's remember. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know what you think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the PBJ loaf and cookie. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. I think they removed it until like maybe later this year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But once you try it, Ooh, so good. <laughs> uh, I'll, yeah. I'll send you, I'll send you a, uh, 
uh, message. <laughs> cool. Well, I appreciate okay. it. Stay on with me. I'm going to wrap this up for everybody listening. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day, night, or morning, wherever you are in the world while you're listening to this episode. Make it awesome.